The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. Hello, everyone. It's the week of Monday, September 3rd, 2018. My name is Taylor Cooper, and this might be news to you. Season 4, Episode 2, What Up, Everybody? With me as always, co-host Kev. What up, Kev? Yo, guys, what up? What up, co-host Danny? Hi, guys. Check us out on mbnnetwork.com. mbnnetwork.com. This is Might Be News Network. We are Might Be News. Yeah. Get yeah. us on Twitter, Might Be News 24-7. That's Might Be News 247. We're on SoundCloud and iTunes. Again, I'm Taylor Cooper. And yo, we had a pop in premiere week. We had a pop in premiere week. I, I do want to take a second to thank everybody has, that has taken time to listen to all the shows and and just give us your ears. Pop in premiere week. So according to my wife, she really doesn't know why we're recording tonight. Cause, what? Because they're killing us in place. They're killing us in place. Relatable radio. Yo, yo, yo let me let, let me yeah, let me start off. Fuck them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable radio is a smash hit. It's a certified smash yo, hit. The girls are killing it. Girls yeah, are they, great. I, I I I thoroughly enjoyed listening to their show. I can't wait for people to hear the second episode. It's even better. It is. It I'm is. I'm excited. Um, you know, first time for everybody on the show doing a show like that together and uh it was it was great for them the second episode's even better i'm telling you and shout out to kevin reevee might be sports is the shit yeah dude that was i was listening to that today we got a new episode of novak and franz this week that uh people are going to be able to check out on thursday special guests uh you know maybe i'll break that later we'll see we, special guests we can't, we'll see. we can't tell them i, mean, I wasn't going to say who it was Possibly some special guests. Nice. Possibly a or two, one or two. Nice special guests on the oh. Novak and Franz show. Nice. Yeah. We'll see. You know, but uh, special guests. Special guests. <laughs> 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 well, we have some guests coming up. Not not on this episode, but um, I've got one worked out for next week. Um, I'm very excited about it. Um, maybe we'll uh, talk more about it uh, coming up later on in the show, but. Uh, I got some got some guests we're working on for the season. We have a guest on our show next week. Yes, a phone interview. Phone oh. interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going on a couple of them in the next. Hopefully, bang, bang, bang. Are we going to partake in this phone interview, or are you going to do it by yourself? And then, well, it depends on if you're here. Because see, I went into a different time space continuum for my interview. Fuck uh, your that time I space here. continuum. Oh, you know, try to talk to these people too. You want to? I'll let you talk to them. Okay. Okay. We'll plan it out. We're friends again. We'll make it work. Okay. Co-host Kev needs to be a part of this. <laughs> I'll tell him. That's one of the stipulations <laughs> in, the, in the negotiations. You'll tell them, is it a him or a her? It's a him. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Shout out Brooklyn. So, Is anyway. it somebody from Wu-Tang? No, it's not somebody from <laughs> Wu-Tang. Jesus Christ, Kev. <laughs> Do you we didn't have that popping of a, of a premiere week. Kev. We didn't have that popping of a premiere week. He's to have sitting Wu-Tang here on all here. calm, talking about a guest. Do you think he'd be like that if it was somebody no, from Wu? No, it, it, would, it would be moving right now. It yeah, would be, yeah. would do Dude, the table. Up. I would have flipped the table with my dick. <laughs> <laughs> would have flipped the table with my dick. Yo, speaking about flipping tables, dude, I almost flipped the table tonight at Applebee's. Really. Oh, dude, I got the worst Charlie horse. I thought I was dying. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. Dude, that's the worst. I couldn't even drive out of the parking lot. Allison had to drive me, and I screamed the whole way to Wawa to get a fucking Gatorade. I've never had a Charlie horse in a public place. Oh, it was horrible. As soon as I was getting out of the booth, and it was just like, bam, fuck you and your leg. Did you make a scene? Yes. Everybody was looking. I looked like a cripple walking <laughs> out of there without crutches. I couldn't bend my leg. It was horrible. What were your boys saying? They, they were. They thought it was the funniest. Thing. <laughs> and then Landon, poor Landon, all he's worried about is getting home safe, thinking I'm going to crash because I couldn't hit the gas because every time I pushed my foot forward to hit the gas, my leg would cramp. Uh, uh, wow. <laughs> couldn't even get out of the parking lot. I had to pull over and jump out, and Allison had to drive home. And hobble around the car? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Horrible. That was probably hilarious. That's, I mean, some, that's, some, uh, that's some bad news. Yeah. 
You want some good news? Hey, did you hear the news? This better be good. You want the good news or the bad news? Give me the good stuff. All right, season four, episode two. Danny, what do you got? All right, uh, this first story, uh, I'm having trouble locating where this happened, uh, but I still want to talk about it because I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, so it was a video that I found, uh, and I think I even posted it on the Facebook page, but there's these two guys that are driving a truck down the street and they're going over a bridge and they see this guy standing on the other side of the fence over this overpass. The truck slows down and the one guy starts recording and the, and the driver yells out the window and he's like, yo man, what's going on? And the guy yells, I'm about to kill myself. I'm going to commit suicide. Wow. So the, the truck comes to a stop and the guy goes, yo, you want to talk? You know, like, can we help you out? Uh, and the guy says, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm sick and tired of everything. I'm just going to jump and kill myself. So the guys in the truck said, you know, what what can we do to help you out? Can we call somebody for you? He said, no, I don't want to talk to anybody. He said, uh, can we offer you money to help you out? The guy said, nope, I don't want any money. Well, then these guys realized that they are driving probably the most valuable truck that they could be driving. It was a beer truck. <laughs> so the one guy yells out the window. He says, yo, you want a beer? And the guy just stands there and he stares at him. And he's thinking about it. And the guy's like, all right, I got him. He says, look, come over the ledge. We'll sit down. We'll have a beer together. The guy gets out, opens up the truck and pulls out a, uh, a case of Coors Light. Wow. He walks up to the guy and says, this entire case is your if you come off the ledge. So as he's talking to the guy, the other truck driver's actually calling 911 to get the cops on the way. Wow. To help this guy out. The guy ends up coming off of the bridge, sitting down, cracking open a beer with this guy. And the funny thing about this is these uh, this truck driver, they actually made a wrong turn that day. They've never crossed that bridge before. Wow. And they just happened to be in the right spot at the right time. And wow. Talk this guy off that ledge by offering him a beer. That's crazy. Wow. So good story. The guy ends up coming off the bridge, doesn't commit suicide, and wars like. Wow. Imagine that. That's crazy. Beer uh, saving lives. Yeah. I told you, beer is saving lives. Bacon is good for you and salad's killing you. There you go. Pretty crazy. Great time to be alive. You heard it here first. It might be news to you. (laughs) So this next story was actually pointed out to me by Jackie from Relatable Radio. This is coming out Fuck them bitches. (laughs) So watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I'm including my wife in that too. But you're including my wife in that too. (laughs) This is coming from Westside High School in Newark, New Jersey. So apparently a lot of these kids in the school have been getting bullied because uh, some of the kids in the school aren't the most wealthy and they don't have a means to wash their clothes. And kids in this school were being so mean that they were actually taking photos of these kids coming to school in dirty clothes and bullying them. Well, the school principal decided he was going to do something about it, and he actually converted one of the rooms in the school to a free laundromat for kids to bring in their clothes and on school time actually wash their clothes so they have something clean to wear to school. Wow. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. That is. Awesome. That's great. It's it's little thing like that that's it's going to help stop bullying and make these kids actually look forward to going to school and not getting bullied. Sure. Talk awesome. about being proactive about something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. It's a great way that he approached the situation where, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. The the story said there was actually one girl that was coming into school with a bag of clothes and uh security was trying to check her bag and she just broke down in tears because it was a bag of dirty clothes. Right. And she didn't want people to know and then you know, next thing you know, this principal opens up this laundromat for everybody, and she's now able to wash her clothes and come to school and, and clean clothes. Nice. Wow. Yep. So good for that principal. Uh, like I said, that was West Side High School in Newark, New Jersey. So it's pretty local to pretty us. Pretty local, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good stuff. Very good. Yep. Good job, Denny. Thank you. Uh, Kev, what have you done so far? Nothing? Nothing. Good for I, you. I said before the show, I don't bring anything to the table, so I don't even know why I'm here. Well, I think I think that you are a very important part of the show. Even I think I think your main contribution is no contribution at all. Damn, I like it. 
Um, so, all right. First off, we last week we kind of had like a catch up episode. Only saw you guys like a couple times during the break. Yep. Uh, and we were off for more than two months, or was it two months? Something like that. So, right around there. Yeah. It felt a lot longer though. It felt long. Yeah. It was nice. Um, but uh, so it was just kind of a whatever episode premiere. But we got some things. First off, uh, rest in peace to Aretha Franklin. Yeah, that was crazy when I saw that. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, they had a really nice uh tribute to her. Yeah. Uh a lot of a lot of good performances. Ari- Ariana Grande, uh Fantasia, I saw was did a really good one. Um uh there's a couple other ones. It was really good. But uh also rest in peace to Senator John McCain. Yeah, that's nuts too. Yeah. I saw uh a couple really nice, you know, speeches. At his funeral was Joe, past week. Was Joe Biden's speech good? Yes, it was fantastic. Was it really? Yeah, they were really close. I mean, what I liked about uh, John McCain, there was a video that was going around of his kind of concession speech after losing to Obama. Yeah. And just like how graceful he was in that loss. Um, it was a great you know, speech on his part, just saying, you know, this is my president now and you know, we don't agree on everything. And I think John, John McCain was very, very respected by a lot of people in politics. Um, I know a lot of people see him as like a war hawk. I see him that way. I mean, uh, he was a POW for five and a half years in Vietnam. Uh, patriot hero. You know, doesn't matter what I think of his political agenda or whatever. Um, he seemed like a pretty decent dude. In like interviews and speeches that I saw him give, so rest in peace to him. It's crazy. There's a lot of controversy surrounding it. Obviously, him and Trump weren't weren't close. Uh, McCain was responsible for not getting uh, Obamacare uh, completely repealed. He was like one of the deciding votes like against it. Um, Trump, of course, made some pretty shitty comments about him. But uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, the queen of soul, like hit after hit after hit after hit. Obviously, her most uh, probably recognizable is Respect. Yeah. I saw a cool video uh, where the the British guards, the guys with the big hats. Yeah. 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 They did like a full band uh, rendition of Respect. No shit. At, like the changing of the guards. Like when they... When they change shifts, I guess they they play mu- music for incoming and outgoing kind of deal. Okay. And today, today we're recording was the day I guess of her funeral in yeah. Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So they played respect. It was dope. Oh, cool. That's cool. It was dope. Yeah, you can check it out. Um. So yeah, there's that. And I just wanted to kind of touch on a couple of things that we saw that we thought was interesting while we were on break. Uh, so a couple of these stories might be a little old, but again, it might be news to you. So go fuck yourself. Uh, you can't tell our guests to go fuck herself. Well, maybe they will and maybe they won't. Well, you know what? No, we can because we are severely lacking in place <laughs> to the girls. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Relatable Radio. I'm on that show, too. <laughs> they do a good job. They do. They I'm do on a good that, job. I'm on that show, too. So Yeah, but they really do a better me. job than you. So <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Mostly I just sit here. You know, I just, I give, uh, uh, unimportant input. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> JJ Watts foundation, um, has done a lot, a lot. Yo, it's still growing a lot for hurricane Harvey relief. It is up to what? $41 million now. Yeah. It's insanity. Yeah. It's insanity. Well, that's what he's done. He's um, he's done so much crazy shit. Like uh, he's b- rebuilt homes, mm-hmm. rebuilt schools, uh, thousands of dollars worth of um, medication to people that couldn't get it. They've cleaned up entire neighborhoods completely. Yeah, uh, and also completely rebuilt them. See, that's what I like about athletes that use their fame and fortune and put it to good use and yep. and not just blow it on stupid shit. 
There's and and, and you know it's crazy. Um, a, a lot a lot of them do it. It's just not it's not a main mainstream story. Yeah, I mean, I, I, every every NFL team, NBA team, Major League Baseball team has some sort of a community outreach, you know, department of sorts that they're doing stuff for their local communities, uh, education, whatever. But a, a lot of these players go out and do different things. Uh, Chris Long and, and Carson Wentz uh, were over in Africa over the summer. He goes over there a lot. Putting water, getting water yeah. to these people. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. Carson Wentz does a lot. They're for, building. For the uh, under, what sort of looking for? Uh, the, the not so wealthy places. Yeah, underdeveloped yeah. places. Yeah. 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 I mean, they go over and they, they dig wells. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get people fresh water. That's nuts. In the middle of in the middle of Africa, and he just opened up a food truck too, and he's offering free meals out of this food truck for people that can't afford to eat. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, that that just happened this week. So like, and and you know, uh, ex players do it, retired players like they. It's it's great to see, but they don't show it enough, and that's a shame. Yeah, um, I feel like they they're only not to diminish what JJ Watt's done for the hurricane relief, but. I think they are only making a big deal about it because of the hurricane. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's a tragedy that that affected a lot of people. So they're just like, whoa, look at this. It sucks because a lot of people don't get the recognition as well for doing. But it's things. also cool to see that those story they're they're still doing all that without it getting so much publicity because they're not in it for for the, that the publicity. I totally agree. I totally agree. <clears throat> I'm just my point of it is it's just I wish that there was more good news out there. Right. There's plenty of good things that they could be talking yeah. about. Like look at what these guys are doing, and I guess they do that on a local news level. But I, I mean, guess, but. I also blame the media because the media is more worried about showing the negative side of things. Well, because that that's what sells. Yeah. Point blank. You know. Yeah. yeah. Sex sells and drama sells. That's it. That's it. Nobody gives a shit yeah. about the happy things in life. Uh, but. We kind of do. I have one thing here. Um, over the summer, industrialized hemp was overwhelmingly passed in the Senate. 86 to 11 vote. Yes. That includes the CBD. Uh, it's all from industrial hemp is a CBD. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, but it also includes like building materials um, and for fabrics and other industrial uses that we've talked about on the show before, you can build you could build a house with hemp straight up. You wait, Supreme is gonna come out with hemp t shirts and they're gonna be nine million dollars each. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> the C B D though, I mean, this is hitting the market big time right now. And it's such a game changer. It's great. It's it's incredible. I use C B D on a daily basis. Uh, I work rotating shifts at work. I'm either working 6 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon, 2 in the afternoon to 10 at night, or 10 at night to 6 in the morning. I don't have a regular sleep schedule. So for me to to try to get to sleep after working the midnight shift, I'll just lay there and stare at the ceiling. A few hits of my CBD, dude, I'm sleeping like a baby. I'm sleeping sound, and I'm sleeping until, you know, my body is recovered. Not yeah. waking up groggy. Not you know. Not tossing and turning. I'm sleeping great. Not like taking well, great for, to go to sleep. Yeah. Well, it's great for anxiety and pain relief as well. Uh, my mom uses like the topical cream and shit. Yeah. On, like her knees and stuff. Yeah. And um, I was. I'm, I'm I'm late to the CBD thing, but I I enjoy it. I mean, I was telling you guys, my mom had knee replacement surgery about two months ago, and uh, she was. She was taking painkillers, and the painkillers weren't touching it. And she started to notice she was she was really chewing these painkillers a lot more than she should have. So I turned her on to CBD. Painkillers are gone, and that's all she uses now is CBD for yep. pain management. Yep, CBD could straight up end the opioid epidemic. Yeah, well, and not only of, and not none, ended, of, the, none but, of these fucking drug companies want it to be legalized either because they're fucking. Out the, out the window of drugs. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's also helping with other things, too. I saw a lady in the store the other day. She had a CBD shirt on, so I struck up a conversation with her. And she was saying she had chronic and severe migraines. Uh, ever since taking the CBD, those migraines are non-existent. 
and her younger son has a brain tumor. And she started giving her younger son CBD, and the brain tumor is actually shrinking, and his health is improving. Damn. It is incredible stuff. Antidepressant, anti-anxiety, uh, pain, sleep aid, uh, you name it, it, it can help. Well, the big uh, to-do, I guess, about this for the people who passed it in the Senate was that um, a lot of products that we use in America has hemp in it already, mm -hmm. but we all, all it's all imported shit. We can't grow it here. Right? Yeah. So we get it from Canada and China and shit. So now they're, they're letting farmers in America grow it, which is going to be huge. Why shouldn't they? If it's legal here, why can't you grow it here? Well, it all changed when like the war on drugs started. And then when uh, hemp became a Schedule One drug, it was over. <laughs> it was over. It's stupid. So, and it's going to be great for the environment as well. It's going to help with, uh, you know, deforestation and all kinds of shit. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so, one other thing that I thought was interesting. As I'm sure everyone knows, um, there's a new branch to the military, the Space Force. Nope. You didn't know about the Space Force? No. You know about this? No. Yeah, Donald Trump created it. Donald Trump created the Space Force, Kev. It's oh. a fucking thing. It's a you could go enlist in the fucking Space Force. Yeah. It's a branch of the military. Yeah, he's trying to make a he's trying to make a, 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 a space military. To so, fight who? Well, I, to fight the little minions from Space Jam. Here's the thing. <laughs> from coming down and stealing the uh, the powers from the NBA players. This isn't this isn't like the major point of what I'm getting at here. I think I discovered why. <laughs> They won a space force because they definitely discovered water on Mars. They definitely discovered salt water on Mars, and they want to colonize. Well, they, I'm sure they want to colonize. They think they've been might talking be about it. Living aliens on Mars. Well, I'm not. I don't think they're. Well, they probably do want to defend ourselves because everybody wants to shoot shit, and you know what I mean, whatever. But yeah, but fuck that. Our fucking M16s are nothing to a laser beam. Well, fucking alien gun. All right, so here it is. <laughs> if, if, if they're talking about if they're talking about making a space force, they probably they have to have some kind of technology like that that we don't know about. Lightsabers. I mean, hopefully. Yo, that'd be so dope. That'd be so dope. <laughs> you imagine? It's like, yo, check out these lightsabers. Like America Space Force, bro. Shung, yeah. Shung. Fuck everything. <laughs> and we got lasers. We got laser guns. Run on batteries and shit. Wi-Fi hotspots. <laughs> I mean, I don't fucking know, dude. Well, they probably got all kinds of technology that we don't know about, obviously. But I'm saying, if they want to start a space force, they got to have some shit. Because how the fuck are you going to go up in space and just shoot a gun? You're not. You're not. That bullet's not going to go nowhere. You're just going to. Do you know that for a fact? Well, I mean, it's going to have trajectory. It's going to go somewhere, but it. I don't think it's going to do the same thing. It's just going to go straight right off the side of the fucking Mars. <laughs> it's going to keep going in the vastness of space until it hits something <laughs> or like burns up in some atmosphere somewhere. I guess you're right. Just go up there and just start shooting machine guns. But then I don't know. It's fucking crazy because space is crazy. But finding water on Mars is even crazier. They have it, it's a 12 mile wide lake apparently underneath the uh, polar caps. It's would like you, a mile underground. Would you go bungee jumping? Into that? No, would you go bungee jumping? In, in period? Period. No. Skydiving? Fuck no. Would you go to space? No, I can't go to space. I'm too tall. <laughs> no, for real. I'm too tall to be an we astronaut. We had this discussion. Yeah. He's too tall. I can't go to space. Unless they, like, unless the they change that. Him and Joel Embiid are, are screwed. Yeah, unless they change that. How tall? How tall am I? How tall are you allowed to be? If you, in I think space? it's only six foot. Oh, well, I'm out. I think. Don't quote me on that. They might have changed it. Are you out, dude? That rocket would not lift off with the inside <laughs> of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just change the subject. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I would, I would go bungee jumping. I'd go skydiving if I, if somebody offered me a chance to go to space. Fuck yeah, I'd go. Really? Fuck yeah. Check it out. Oh. I'd probably go on one of those. You know, they they're they're doing like the commercial flights in space now. Well, not now, but they're working on it. 
where you can go up there and just float around for a minute and then come back down. Yeah, I want to be in zero gravity. I would do that. I think that would be awesome. That it would, would be, be all, yeah, it would be awesome to be in zero gravity, but bungee jumping and skydiving and going into space, nope. Not for I, me. Get, get, yep. So I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'm you out. Would, you wouldn't go to space? No. 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 Dude, I okay. So to put it in perspective for you, like uh the the thrill factor and everything. Yeah. So I went to Dutch Wonderland last weekend, took my kids. Okay. And Dutch Wonderland is a kitty amusement park. Okay. And they, they had they just built a new roller coaster. I went on it. How was it? It scared me. <laughs> <laughs> really? The last like, time was I was there. Sketchy. The last time I was there, they were in the process of building it. Yeah, my my six year old. I was like, "Come on, Cole, let's go. It'll be fun. This is a roller coaster. Let's go. <laughs> come on, come on." And then when we got done, I felt so bad because I was scared. It was his, a legit dude, his head, roller coaster. Dude, his, yeah, his it, with, where your feet are dangling and everything. Like, oh no, no. Yeah, no. it was sketchy. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. I'm good on all that. Yeah, you know, I'm so fa- I'm, I'm so afraid anymore that I'm gonna just fall out of these things. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, how about the one down at the beach? Have you ever done the one down? Not not roller coaster, but the little ball that you get in that pulls real tight. And I did shoots it. Shoots you into the air. I did it. Oh, I did it, it too. It was fucking. <laughs> Awesome. It was the scariest thing I've ever been through in my so life. Awesome. See, I'm not scared of heights. <laughs> Count me out. I'm not scared. I, it was so much fun. See, here's my problem. I love roller coasters. I love doing that kind of stuff. I'm a big dude. <laughs> and those lap belts, they just don't fit down on me. <laughs> so I don't even try anymore because it's kind of embarrassing when you go up there to get on a roller coaster and they're like, sir, we can't put the lap belt down. Yeah, you got to yeah. get off. And I'm like, no, <laughs> fuck that. So I don't even try anymore. But yeah, I, I love doing that scary kind of scary stuff. stuff. Like count me the fuck out. I would have an anxiety attack. <laughs> I have an anxiety attack watching people fucking do you, it. You would be the YouTube sensation that passes out. Oh my god, are you kidding up me? In the air. I would pass out. I would shit myself. <laughs> I'd just be shit flying around in zero minute. gravity. Just wait waiting. a minute. Just wait a minute. That's it. But. We're sending him on one of those. A roller coaster. That's his redemption. I would roller do a redemption coaster. Listen, to him. I'll, ro- I'll I ride roller coasters. No. But them fucking things with the rubber band that shoots nope. you in the We're sky. We're doing the ball. No. We're doing the ball. No. The ball. 0%. Yeah. Chance. I, uh, okay. For shaving I, our fucking leg. No. You're going in the ball. 0%. Chance. And we're going to put a GoPro on for, there. For the good oh, no, of the show. Already, yeah. For no. the good of the show. For the no. good of the show. Yep. No. No. For the no. good of the show. You no. are a puss. No. Will yes. you get your belly button pierced if he does the ball? If you get your belly button pierced. I'll get my belly button pierced. And you get your belly button pierced if he if goes in the ball. ball. Zero discussion. Yes. Zero discussion. That's the deal. And zero this discussion. is why the girls are beating us deal. in ratings. That's the deal. <laughs> zero, zero. Double, we're double, not, double, we're double. Not, we're not resorting to this. Double belly yes, button. Second episode. If no, we get 100 not. plays this week. <laughs> oh, my God. No. No. You're wrong. I'm not doing it. Double belly button pierced if you do the ball. No. No. Wow. Well, I'll get my belly button pierced with you guys if we get 100 plays. <laughs> No, no, no. You go in the ball. No, no. <laughs> yes. No, <laughs> dude, you are so it, listen, lame. So listen, I did it a few years ago. It, it was, it was fun. I did it, it with my brother. It is hell. It was no. Fun. I love wow. watching the videos of the guys go up and they're so excited. And then as soon as oh. they go up, I start coming back down. They, <laughs> and then they're snoring. I have an unreasonable fear of heights. <laughs> so what? Like unreasonable. You're not up there that long. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a stern no. That's a solid 10 out of 10 no. What if somebody is going to pay you $100? No. 100 bucks. 200 at <laughs> least. <laughs> All right, I'm going to set up a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you set up a GoFundMe and people donate, like, you know, Couple hundred thousand dollars, I'll definitely no, no, do it like ten times. Whoa, you said two hundred. People set up goals for these things and they get surpassed all the time. Yeah, two hundred dollars is yeah. our goal. Yeah, and you're going on it for two hundred dollars. I'll go on it for no <laughs> two hundred bucks. You heard it here first. Yeah, two hundred bucks, and I'll punch Kevin in the face. <laughs> all right. So back to the whole Mars thing. How did they find this water if it was a mile? So they used uh, the satellites and they used radar. Uh, so they found the ice and they shot these, you know, not x-rays. I don't really know what the technology is, but they shot these radio like waves the sound down waves into it. Down yeah. there? Okay. And they analyzed what was down there. 
and um, they wanted to see if it was a fluid, if there was motion under there, yeah. and there was, and that's the only thing that they can think of what it would be because there is ice there. There is ice. They okay. know that there's ice at the, at the north and south pole, I guess, of Mars, but um, that's where they found that shit, and they, they use these satellites to, to look into it, and they actually spent a couple years analyzing this data to make sure that they were right, and they confirmed it. That's pretty awesome. There's nice. water on Mars. Pretty cool. That's nuts. Which leads them to believe that there should be life there. Yeah. Underneath the surface. Because yeah. life is manageable. Yeah, my whole thing is. Oh, fucking big alien worms or big something. Big alien worms <laughs> or big alien fish looking fucking things. <laughs> Fuck that. Fuck that. Somebody else go check it out first. I'm not going. You're too big anyway. I'm too big anyway. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. So, I saw something cool that I want to talk about. Okay. I was surfing the internet, and I saw these absolutely ridiculous headlines. Absolutely ridiculous, and I thought they were hilarious. Can you Let's let's do those. I know what you're talking about. Let's do those after the break. You suck. You, let's, is that your point? No. What's your point? <laughs> I thought you were going to just yeah, say that, it out loud. I'll use, uh, see if he's I'll, I'll say use it out my loud. point. I'll use it as my point. All right. Well, we're going to take a break real quick, and we're going to come right back with more Might Be News right after this. No. <laughs> Check out Relatable Radio on the Might Be News Network. On iTunes and SoundCloud. New episodes every Tuesday. Oh. Uh, this is a mom confession all right i forgot to pick landon up from school <laughs> only one day That's one only- day okay all right but i was at the bus stop i forgot to pick him up at school so you were so making an I effort was- it's not like you were out partying right right were- yeah this is ruined mm-hmm. and it's bringing up you know he uh, in 30 years he's gonna bring that up to you it was awful like it was 30 minutes late and the teacher's like oh i told him you were late because you're probably going back to school night for your kindergarten and i was like oh <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, that's a nice. Oh. That's exactly why I'm late. I was not watching Ellen. No, no, of course no. Not. I didn't make coffee and sit on the couch. No, not at all. All right, and we're back. What up, guys? Yo, hi. Check us out on mbnnetwork.com. It's a dope website. You know pretty dope yeah do a pretty good job you can listen to the show on there yeah. through soundcloud you know i don't think you need a, a you know account, an account i don't think you do either either way that shit's free do it yeah if you got a uh, an iphone an ipad the ipod app comes pre-downloaded just open it up and search might be news yep and you'll be able it's to there. get access to all these shows yep all of them dope so uh that was a good first segment. Uh, let's do What's the Point? Here we go. What's the point? Is there a point to this? What is your point? Are you just going to sit there and look stupid? All right, Kev, you kind of alluded to your point, so what is it? So I was surfing the internet. I saw this website of these absolutely ridiculous headlines, and I wanted to, wanted to take a little bit of time and read some of them because I thought they are so, – dude, they're they're – Absolutely ridiculous. Now these are legit legit head- headlines. That I, I'll I'll post it uh, or I'll send it to you. We'll, we'll post it to the Facebook site or, yeah. or something for people to check this out. But so these are clipped right from a newspaper. Clipped right from the newspaper. There's actually the whole article is there. The awesome. whole article. Uh, student excited. Dad got head job. <laughs> <laughs> Statistics show that teen pregnancy drops off significantly at age 25. <laughs> what? Say that one again. Statistics show that teen pregnancy drops <laughs> off significantly after age 25. <laughs> teen pregnancy at 25. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one arm man applauds the kindness of strangers. <laughs> Lady jacks off to hot start in the conference. <laughs> it's a basketball. Uh, homicide victims rarely talk to the police. A <laughs> <laughs> rod goes deep. Wang hurt. 
Jesus por- Christ. Porn star sues over rear end collision. <laughs> Dude, these some of these articles are absolutely ridiculous. And you can sit there and read the whole freaking article. Uh, condom truck tips spills a load. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> City unsure why the sewer smells, dude. These, uh, it, dude, it's dude. <laughs> yo. You just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Dude, it just keep going and going. They go forever. Uh, a woman in sumo wrestler suit assaults her ex girlfriend in a gay pub after she waves at a man dressed as a Snickers bar. Like these fucking fuck. <laughs> these I want to go to that party. <laughs> Dude, these articles are absolutely ridiculous, and I just had so much fun, uh, so much fun reading them. Tiger Woods plays with own balls. Nike says, <laughs> <laughs> "Too much fun, just yeah, having too much fun looking at <laughs> looking at that kind of stuff." I'm sorry, but that was my point. That's all I have. Good job, <laughs> Danny. What do you got? So I'm actually going to do a little follow up of the story we talked about. Um, I believe it was John Wilcox that actually talked about this on a good news segment when he was filling in for me. Uh, So this is actually local to us. Uh, It's about Kate McClure uh, from New Jersey who was driving (coughs) down in Philadelphia last November when she ran out of gas. Pulled off to the side of the road. Uh, Homeless man Johnny came up with his last $20, bought her a can of gas, and got her home safe. They set up a GoFundMe. They raised $400,000 to get this guy a car, a house, a job, and to get him back on his feet again. It's crazy. That's crazy. $400,000. Saying I'll give him one of those ball things for $400,000. <laughs> well, it's not playing out as good as it sounds. Turns out Johnny only got an estimated $75,000 of that 400000 What? Yeah, so <laughs> the the people that made the GoFundMe for for Johnny actually have it in their name in their bank account. They went out and they bought him this little RV slash camper, and they parked it on a plot of land that they own. They then went out and bought him this little beat up uh, SUV that broke down within a few weeks that is now not usable. And the rest of the money, they're using it on themselves. Going on luxury vacations, paying off bills. Uh, He ended up blowing $500 one night in the casino. Jesus. And they bought themselves a brand new BMW. (laughs) (laughs) What? So they set up this GoFundMe and raised $400,000. And... They actually said that they aren't going to give him all the money and that if they had to, they would burn it in front of him. What? Yep. So now this it's becoming this big ordeal. Johnny's taking him to court um, saying he is literally back to having nothing again. His car broke down. He's living in a tr- uh, an RV that's parked on their land and he has no access to this money whatsoever. Holy shit. Uh, but I heard a different twist on the story that he's back on drugs and they didn't want to give him the money because he is back on drugs. He he I I believe he did say he did start using a little bit here and there, but he isn't back to what he was. Gotcha. But that's all happening because he's going through all this cuz he can't get to his money. So he's actually taking them to court and The court is demanding that they turn over the rest of the funds to him, which after luxury vacations, a brand new BMW, it can't be that much. Ouch. That's a crazy situation because it's like he tried to do something good. They tried to do something good and it just turned into a big fucking mess. Money is the root of all evil. Straight up. Well, and like. I don't know how GoFundMe works. Like, I've never done that or set up, like, a GoFundMe account for anything. So you actually have to link a bank account to it. Yeah, but, like, wouldn't you wouldn't you put a limit on it? Like, you, So you can put a goal. Yeah. But if people are donating, 
of what it was just it? overloads. Four, Fourteen thousand people donated to this GoFundMe account. Yeah, like went viral or something. Yeah, and, so and- it's not going to stop. If you're going to donate, it's going to keep donating. It's going to show you, um, you are at you know four hundred thousand dollars of your ten thousand dollar goal. So, wow! If they kept this GoFundMe open, they could still be collecting money to this day. All right, so check it out. I guess. If dude is, uh, you know, back on drugs or not trying to better himself or, you know, obviously if you, even on $400,000, like you still got to go out and find a job if you're homeless. There's, now you can get clean. Now you can go out and do this shit. Um, he like, didn't have time to do any of this. Like the car that they bought him yeah. to go do these job interviews broke down. Yeah. And they aren't giving him the money to fix it. Right. Yeah. See, that part of it's crazy. Like you got to be at least got to be on like helping this dude along you know what i'm saying yeah. like if that that's what the money's they got four hundred thousand dollars why would they buy him a beat up car that's the thing like get him a fucking brand new hyundai or something he only used an estimated seventy five thousand dollars of the four hundred seventy five thousand dollars though is a lot of money but they bought him a camper and they parked it on their property so I wonder what this camper's all about. And a vehicle. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, dude, you can probably get a camper for probably a, a really nice camper, I'm guessing, for a solid 25000 More than that, probably. Uh, I mean, some of the campers are, like, fucking real nice, dude. I, I wish we had pictures. We were looking We were looking at uh, campers last summer because we, 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 we went to, we, we got, like, a cabin right. down in Virginia and shit. Um. And like, there's some fucking luxurious campers, bro. Yeah, you're right. But they're usually the luxurious ones you can usually drive. Yeah. Well, you can pull them behind too, for sure. All these campers, they like fold out. Like, it's crazy. So I don't know what they got them. But I mean, if the car's already broke down. It sounds like they probably spent more money on the camper than anything. Well, yeah. apparently he no longer has the camper either. Get the fuck out of here. According to this news report, um, he can't use what's left of the GoFundMe, and he no longer has the camper or the card that was purchased for him with some of the funds. Probably because he's taking them to court, and they're just like mad, spiteful people. Since it's parked on their property, it yeah, is they're just like their fuck property. Off. Yeah, they're just like, yeah. fuck off, dude. Situation gonna all have been taken care of if she just made him a couple sandwiches and gave him twenty bucks back. Right, and the whole just thing wouldn't have happened. The GoFundMe thing. I mean, they might have done that just for some crazy publicity, too. I don't know. Or they just did it because they were trying to be nice, like he was. You know, like I said, just a nice thing that turned into a fucking mess because of money. That's crazy. Because you look in that account and see $400,000. Right. You know, if you're a person that's been struggling, I mean, it's a lot of money. A lot of money. Um. Okay, so my point this week is uh, today is Friday. We're recording. Uh, Eminem just came out with a basically a surprise album. It's called Kamikaze. Uh, I've listened to it three times, cover to cover to today, but I still haven't like digested the whole thing, so I'm not going to rank it. I'm not going to do a late review on it right now. That's why this is your point, not late review. It's my point because I feel like if there, if you are an M, if you've ever been an Eminem fan in your life. Chances are it was early Eminem, right? Yep. Yeah, we talked about this before when we were going through our with top Chad. five. Yeah, yeah. With Chad. And right. it was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you, always you both- old school Eminem. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it wasn't new school. It was old school Eminem. This is, this is uh, closer to that than anything I've heard from him in the past 10 years. <laughs> That's nuts. It's really good. I'll have to check it out. Well, we just listened to a clip during the break. Yeah, I should. It was yeah. wild. Yeah, it's good. It was yeah. awesome. I I highly recommend it. Um, you gotta listen to it. the The ringer is the first song. Uh, Lucky you featuring Joiner Lucas is is an insane track. That's what we just listened to a little bit ago. Uh, Not alike featuring uh, Royce the Five Nine is great. Kamikaze. Uh, there's a song called Venom, which I guess is also going to be on the movie soundtrack for the movie you know, for Venom coming out soon. Uh, that's really good. <clears throat> I enjoyed it. the The thing with it, though, is that like he he's bitching pretty much throughout the whole thing about people hating on him 
for his last album, Revival. I, we talked about it uh, in season three. Well, it was junk. It was terrible. I really did not like it at all. It was just like, uh, I don't know. It came across as like, he he was really preachy on it, but he also did like a lot of, it was just like filled with like miserable, like butt and like poop jokes. Mm-hmm. Like it was just dumb to me. And it was like, none of the beats were hot. Like I just didn't, I don't know. The song with like Ed Sheeran on it and like Beyonce ballad, like all this shit. It was just dumb. So like this was, and the fact that he released this in the same year is pretty crazy. It's a redemption CD. It is, and it's really good. Like the beats are all really dope. Uh, Dr. Dre produced this, really good. Surprise, surprise. I'm yeah. I'm, <laughs> I was I was very surprised by it. First of all, he kind of hijacked the Beastie Boys "License to Ill" cover. So uh, when I, <clears throat> I mean, he made it his own. He put a little, you know, his own little thing on it. But uh, certainly at first glance, uh, first thing this morning, every Friday I wake up and seriously, before I even get out of bed, I look on iTunes to see the new, the new music. And uh, so I woke up and that's the first thing that popped up. And I'm like, Did they released the remastered version of like License to Ill or whatever. Like, that's dope. And then I looked, I'm like, Eminem. I opened it, and I'm like, holy shit, this is a fucking whole album. It's I I was very pleasantly surprised by it. Nice. For real. Uh, so that's my point. So from your initial very first listen, what would you give it? I know it's not your late review, but. um, Early review, because I'll probably review it next week. Spoiler yeah. alert. Early review, I give it a nine. Okay. Solid. Wow. And that's saying big things because you're not a really big Eminem fan. That's the thing, though. I'm like everybody else. Like, I like his older shit. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of just have have lost interest in him over the years. First of all, he, like, disappeared for a long time. He didn't do much for, like, a while. He did drugs or whatever. And then he's, you know, he's back and it's cool, but, like, it's just not the same. And... You know, whatever. This is very lyrical, very good. It's very good. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Nice. I, I, I figured you guys would appreciate it because I remember that you guys are like me with the with the old school M shit. So I've seen a lot of people talking about it on Facebook and everybody says the same thing. It is old school M and M. Yeah. So this is definitely an album that I will be looking at getting. It's really good. Kamikaze, yeah. M and M just came out today. This week, whatever. It's really good. I'll have to order the CD or something. <laughs> or just pay $10 a month for... Yeah. Or you can look it up on Spotify. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I don't have Spotify. <laughs> but maybe... You, I'm sure you could. Spotify's got everything now. Yeah, see, but like where I work, I can't listen to music at work. Oh, right, right, right. So, right. I mean, it, it, it'd be cool if I could. I could just, you know, plug it into work. But, you know, the majority of the time when I get to listen to music, it's just driving to and from work. I blast shit at work. Yeah. Here we go with late review. I know it's a little late, but... You're just hearing about this? I can't believe I'm just hearing Why didn't I know about this sooner? All right, late review. This week, I'm going to do a documentary that I watched on HBO. Was it good? Was it good? It was really good. I watched the Andre the Giant documentary. Okay. And first of all, it was dope. I, I... I remember Andre the Giant growing up. I thought he was awesome, just yep. how huge he was. Uh, what is it? Princess Brides. He was great in that movie. Um, it's not a cult classic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was on TV the other day. We were watching it. Nice. He's great. Um, but the the documentary was fantastic because it, it showed me so much about him that I didn't know. And um, like... <laughs> First of all, when he was like a teenager, it was wild because he was he was getting really big, but he was like super scrawny still. Right. And I just remember him as like this enormous guy. So it was like crazy seeing him like that. But like the stories that people were telling during the during the thing, he was a global phenomenon. Like he traveled the globe wrestling in different like wrestling organizations and before the WWF picked him up. Well, the WWF 
at first was, and this is another thing I didn't know about professional wrestling. It was separated by like different regions because it was before cable television. Like all these places just had like local networking. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So like the tri-state area was the WWF was like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. Basically the whole Northeast was the WWF. And then there was like a Southern, you know, wrestling federation, Midwest, you know, Southwest, whatever. So is that like the ECW and the WCW? Right. Type, type deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, But they were like all televised on like local channels because that's how TV worked at first. Like there was no cable national news. There was no national nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Andre the Giant would travel around the country when he first came to North America. Um, He would travel to all these different wrestling federations and he became, became a national icon without even really getting that attention because there wasn't that possibility. No internet, no cable news. Um, but when Vince McMahon started the WWF, when cable television came out, he was he was one of the biggest faces of the WWF national thing. You yeah, know what he, I'm saying? Yeah, his face was huge. 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 Like it was um, big. And they have like they they start telling all these like drinking stories and like guy started his day off with like a case a case of wine. Uh, he huh. drank a case or two of beer, typically a day. Wow. Sometimes a case of cognac as well. A case of a cognac. A case of cognac. Like, Guy was a fucking battle tank. Like, the guy was huge. Um, but from, like, all the stories and stuff, like, he seemed like the nicest dude. Um, <clears throat> throughout, you kind of feel bad for him because you don't, when you see him, you don't really think about, all like the the uh, usual like amenities for people like normal sized, right? Like hotel beds. He there was like hardly any that could fit this guy. He was on an airplane constantly. There was no room for him. Like for him to go to the bathroom on an airplane, they had to like pull the shade up front, and uh-huh. he had to like pee and, pee and poop in a bucket, bro. Wow! And they had to dump it in the you know what I mean in the yeah. bathroom because yeah. he couldn't fit in the bathroom on an airplane. That's nuts. He took up a whole row. Like he sat in a whole thing, you know, three seats or two seats or whatever. It was crazy. It looked crazy. Like, but um, the it's a sad story. I mean, uh, in the end, it's a sad story. But it was a great. He lived a great life. I give it a, a, a nine, strong nine. Now, this was was this a series? No, it was just a documentary. It was like two hours or something. Um, it was really really good. And what was it on? HBO. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, Andre the Giant. I still remember when the uh, the Undertaker fought him and gave him the tombstone. It was. Uh, uh, I don't think that was him. That was Hulk Hogan. Was Hulk, it Hulk Hogan, Hogan slammed him? Yeah. Okay, Hulk that, Hogan that's what I'm thinking him. of. Yeah. yeah. In WrestleMania three. Yeah. And because that was when Hulk Hogan was like on his way up. Yeah. And the crazy thing is that him and Hulk Hogan were like tag team partners. Like they were good friends. And, um, but that was when like all the wrestling federations were like separated and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so it was like this crazy thing when they, when they went at each other and that was like coming up real quick on the end of Andre, the giant's career. And that's kind of why that match took place was to kind of pass the torch, so to speak to Hulk Hogan. Yeah. But I remember that too, like from growing up, like I remember Hulk Hogan being the biggest fucking thing ever when we were kids. He had TV show like cartoons and shit. Like it was toys, it was wild. And, toys, all that know. shit. It was nuts. Hulkamania. That was awesome. Go watch that documentary. I was a Hulkamaniac. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, what do you got, Kev? I watched shows. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't pick anything in particular to review this week. Wow, Kev. But I was watching it before I came over tonight. What is it? Impractical Jokers. Oh. I love that show. I sit there with my son and cry to this show. It's one of those shows where if you're looking for something to watch, you can't find anything and you see it's on TV, uh, you just put it on. Yeah. And yeah. you can still laugh at like reruns because they're still constantly, fucking hilarious. Constantly. I didn't pick anything to review. I'm sorry. Well, what do you give this show? Out of 10? Yeah. 
Probably like a nine and a half every time. Wow, every really? Time. Every time. Every time. You watch what, what, it, Practical Joker? No. What is Have it you on? ever seen it? I don't. I don't think so. Are you kidding me? Where, where is it? On demand. Oh, really? Well, what <laughs> I mean, channel does it come um, on? Um, True TV. Yeah. Okay. True TV. Okay. And dude. four friends that just like they they put earpieces in and they make them do stupid shit. It's hysterical. Really? So the, the one of the one of the skits that I was watching tonight. Uh, Sal, one of the guys from the show, he's they stage him as a counter worker in a laundromat, and he has an earpiece in, and all three guys are behind the scenes and everything, telling him what to say. And this woman comes into a laundromat that she just had pants tailored, just pa- had pants tailored for, her, and they're telling her she's trying on each pair of pants, and they say they tell her to say. Oh, those pants look good. And then he's getting real into it. And then she puts on the second pair of pants. And she's like, he says, now get more enthusiastic with it. And he's like, oh, those pants look really good. And then get more enthusiastic with it. And it, dude, it's just a rolling, rolling laughter. Yeah. It is hilarious. Wow. They're, they're four lifelong friends. And basically, it's a competition. You have to do what they tell you to do. If you don't, you get a thumbs down. And whoever at the end has the, the most thumbs down, they lose. And, so yeah. like the one episode, uh, Q lost, and they handcuffed him to a mime for 24 hours. Wow. And it's just, if you want a good laugh, dude, you have to watch Impractical. I guarantee I'll check you, it out. If you go look on TV right now on True TV, Impractical Jokers is on. I'll check it out. Like they'll shit. run it for hours. Funny really? shit. Yeah. Yep. What do you got, Danny? So I, I did a TV show as well. Uh, this is a, a show that I've been I've been watching lately. It's on the History Channel. It's called Alone. Uh, and what they do is they take these ten individuals and they put them out in the wilderness, and they are allowed to bring out I believe it's ten items to survive out there. Uh, this this is uh, I just got done watching season five, and they went out to Mongolia. And they put these ten individuals out in Mongolia. Now they're a good eight to ten miles apart from each other. So literally, they're out there by themselves, and they have to survive for as long as possible. Uh, and the winner, five hundred thousand dollars. Wow, five hundred thousand dollars. Sounds like my kind of show. Well, now the the guy that just won, he's twenty four years old. He is from Lincoln, Nebraska, and he survived sixty days out there by himself. <laughs> now you have to provide yourself with water. Food, a living, uh, you know, a, a place to, to live, to sleep. But you're out there in the wilderness with bears and wolves. And it is just, it's wild seeing the shelters that these guys built to survive in and seeing what they had to go through and the toll of just being alone by yourself and just how it breaks you down mentally and physically. Like there were guys tapping out because they've, mentally couldn't take it anymore just being alone out there yeah that's that's but crazy they got to bring out uh 10 items by themselves and it made me you know think about you know what i would bring out it was just you know how could you pick just 10 items to survive out there it's impossible well i, I mean i guess it it wouldn't have it couldn't be impossible but that sounds pretty interesting what it, channel is that on it was on history channel history channel yep Check called alone. alone season five just i've ended. heard of that Oh, season five or five seasons in five it? seasons. Yep, I'm gonna check that out. Awesome show. Just seeing how they uh, how they how they go out there and and hunt for food and build traps and overcome obstacles. Uh, the one guy that won uh, this season, his name was Sam. Sam was having stomach issues and he didn't take a shit for like thirty days. Holy shit! And he was almost to the point of tapping out because he was going to be doing physical damage to himself because he literally could not take a shit for thirty days. Wow, that's insanity. Yeah, I can't imagine that. Yep, wild stuff. I I, I give it a, a an eight. Wow, I mean, it's awesome show to watch. History Channel. Yep, History Channel. Kev, what happened this week in history? This week in history, I am dropping the ball. I've totally forgot. Totally forgot. Totally God forgot. damn it, Kev. No, 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 no. I just forgot to bring it up on my phone. You are a true disappointment tonight. It's okay. <laughs> it's really okay. Is it? September 3rd, 1939, Great Britain and France declared war on Germany during World War II. 1976, an unarmed or an unmanned spaceship Viking II landed on Mars and took the 
first pictures of the planet's surface. Wow, very cool. Very so cool. it's a connection. Full, full circle. Yeah, yeah. Full circle. Wow. September 4th, 1957. Uh, nine black students attempt to enter a Little Rock Central High School, but were blocked by National Guards. Wow. September 6th, 1941. Nazi Germany required all Jews over the age of six to wear a yellow Star of David on their clothes. September 6, 1997, more than two billion people watched Princess Diana's funeral. Uh, September I remember s- that. You remember that? Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. It was wild. Yeah, wild. She died on August 31st, 1997. Yep. yep. yep I remember that. Uh, September 7th, 1979, uh, Entertainment and Sports Programming Network. ESPN made its television debut. When wow. was that? Uh, September 7th, 1979. That's wow. crazy. That's crazy. Nice job, Danny. Thanks. I think you did a good job as well, too. Thanks. So we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs> 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 no, nice job, Kev. Thanks. Anyway, you had a good recovery. This week in history was very fascinating. Right. Yeah. And right. a full circle with the Mars thing. Yep. Yeah. I'm impressed. Only a little bit. Check us out on mbnnetwork.com, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Kev. $200 on the GoFundMe will get him in the ball, (laughs) and he will go shooting towards the sky. I promise. $200. You would do it for $200. No. (laughs) We'll leave it as a possible yes for now. It's no. $300. We'll have to talk more about it later. Five hundred dollars. I would probably do it for five hundred dollars to watch you scream I like said, a little girl. Probably. No, you would for five hundred dollars. No, if I was it. shaking five hundred dollar bills in front of your face and saying you get this if you go on that ball right now, no, right. Any, no, no, no. Anytime. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying right now. If you had it and you did that, my answer would be. No, bro, that's five hundred dollars. I need a fart out of Rosie O'Donnell's ass for five hundred dollars. <laughs> wow, that's rugged. It's <laughs> rugged. On that note, peace out, Kev. See ya. Peace out, Danny. Peace out. All right, guys, catch us on there. Do all that shit. Check out Relatable Radio, Might Be Sports, and the new Novak Fran show this week. Uh, thanks for listening. Again, we really appreciate the. Hop in premiere week. We had uh, get at us on Twitter. Might be news 24 7. I'm Taylor Cooper. Peace out.